by JFB and in this video I'm gonna show you the course outline for the JFB course. Without wasting much time, let's get started. So the course is featured in two sections. One, the theory of CS, theory of computer science, theory of CS and two, uh, programming using Java. I know most of you know that because I stated it in a previous video. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. It explains what JFB is and what JFB aims to achieve. I know most of you are wondering to why I'm emphasizing so much on the theory of CS, but technically speaking, you can't learn programming without knowing this because programming is depending on this. Imagine this, how can you learn practically almost anything in this world without knowing how that thing works? There are many examples. You can't know how to drive a car without knowing how a car works. You can't know how to fly a plane without knowing how a plane works and all those things. That's why as to that, I'm also emphasizing on the theory of CS because it shows how programming works and what's really happening in the computer for all those instructions or codes which are writing for them to work. That's why we're going to touch mostly on the theory of computer science, but not too deeply, just on the fundamentals required for you to understand programming. So in the theory of computer science, let me just write it out. Theory of CS, we're going to cover these topics. So we're going to start with binary systems and uh, hexadecimal system. I know most of you maybe already know what this is, but I just want to I just want it to be like a reminder of these topics because they're going to help us a lot in data types in Java, Boolean algebra. Don't be scared if you have never heard of the word Boolean algebra. It's actually the simplest kind of algebra. Computer architecture. In this computer architecture, we're going to learn how a computer works at its core in the CPU and all those things. Then after that, high and low level languages. So here we're gonna differentiate between a high level language like Python or Java and a lower level language like C. Why does this one work like this and why that? And ethics, computer ethics. Ethics, we're gonna cover mm, hacking. Don't worry, I'm not going to teach you how to hack. I'm going to teach why Hacking is bad. Maybe most of you know that, but you're just going to see uh, types of software. So don't worry. You will surely understand this. We need to cover these topics before we can even dive into programming because I find these topics really fundamental before you learn any sort of programming. So when it comes to programming, which I know everybody is excited about programming, we're going to learn problem solving yes you're gonna learn how to solve problems but not problems like involving finances and all that problem solving like how can you sort numbers in an array how can you find the fastest route and all those things then after that we're gonna learn pseudocode 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 is that's like code in english and flowcharts diagrams which depict code then we're gonna learn everybody's favorite java so in Java, we're going to cover variables, uh, loops, uh, conditionals, um, OOP, object oriented programming, object oriented programming, and many more. You'll see even J unit testing and all those if it comes to that. After that, Java, we're now going to learn the topics of computer science. Then I think after that, you should know all the fundamentals of programming. Mind you, all these concepts, which are listed out here, are applied to almost all the programming languages because in C, you're supposed to learn variables, loops. In Python, you're supposed to learn these things. In uh, Scala, Ruby, anything like that, you're supposed to learn all these things. So. That was the course outline for the course. 